Hi everybody, I'm Mike Garska with SuccessToolChest.com and FindAMentor.com. Welcome to this week's Help Me Communicate, where I help you be a better communicator. This week, we're going to talk about finding common ground in those difficult situations. We're going to talk about getting the other person to say yes three times and get them in that affirmative state of mind so that we can get to that win-win outcome. What would it be like if you knew how to find common ground with difficult people or in difficult situations and move that struggle onward? Well, it's actually not that difficult. Do you have people in your life that you would like to be able to communicate with at a little bit deeper level? How about maybe you, do you have people in your life who just want to get them to understand you better and they seem closed off? Do you ever feel like you can't get through to someone? Would you like more confidence in approaching those difficult situations or those difficult people? What would it be like if you could find a way to get to that common ground and compromise with almost anyone? What would it be like if you knew how to approach those difficult situations with confidence that you knew exactly what words to use, what questions to ask? What would it be like if you knew how to instantly adjust in a difficult situation or circumstance as things trigger and, and move on? Would you have less stress? Of course you would. And I'm sure you'd like that. Communications, communicating, comes from the Latin word communis, which literally means to make common. Communis from the Latin word means to make common. So communication isn't about doing something to someone or or, or with someone. It's about finding common ground. And that little change in perspective can take you to another level and make a huge difference in your life. Um, when, when we get the person we're interacting with in that yes frame of mind, it's easier to influence that interaction in the way we want. And Stephen Covey, uh, in his Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, says one of those basic habits is to create win-win situations or outcomes. And how do you do that? By communicating the right way, in the right format, at the right time, and by finding common ground. And it's actually quite easy um, when we understand how people communicate to find common ground. Because all people communicate in the same similar process. It's called the HIP, the Human Interaction Process. And what happens as we communicate and all people go through this all day, every day long, as we communicate with ourselves and with other people and with the world around us, but mostly with other people. What happens when we're communicating is, first thing that happens is one of our five physical senses kicks in. Now, when we're communicating with others, we typically see something or hear something or both. And from that, we get a thought. We get a thought pattern based on what we witnessed, whether we saw it or heard it. And we also get an emotion or a feeling. So we sense something, we think, we feel, and out of that three, those three processes, we gain an intention. And then we choose our action in some way. So we sense, we think, we feel, we intend, and then we act. And we all go through this process. Now that action might be being silent. It might be reaching out and touching somebody. It might be speaking specific words. It might be moving away from a situation. All kinds of different things. But as we process, as we sense something, think, feel, intend, and then speak is typically when we're communicating with other people is the action and our body language and our facial expression and our, all those voice tone and all those things happen all simultaneously. But as we do that, the other person reacts in their hip, in their human interaction process. And they hear or see us do and hear and or see us do something. Then they get a thought, they get a feeling, they get an intention and they choose their action. Now what happens in when communications uh, breaks down um, is that um, mostly it's because one of the parties fails to understand and acknowledge and validate the other person and their human interaction process. And as soon as one of us forgets to validate or acknowledge or honor the other person's process, communications begins to break down. As soon as I expect other people to be and process exactly like I do, communication will typically break down. And so, if we want to find common ground, 
The easiest way to do that is to explore the other person's human interaction process in a conversation and then to validate it and acknowledge it and honor it as being true and real and honest for them. Now, realize that um, everybody's human interaction process is as unique as every person's DNA. The way we interact with other people, the way we respond to different situations, really depends on our character. And our character is developed from the time we're a baby till here we are now. And it's developed based on how we were brought up and how we, uh, the people that we interacted with, the people that we admired, what we learned from our peers, from our teachers, from our parents, from our aunts, from our uncles. And all of those things that come into our senses develops our character, develops our beliefs and our values. And each person's is a little bit unique. Now, there may be many people that sense and think and feel and intend similar to us, but there's always a little bit off. There's always a little bit of uniqueness. Brothers and sisters have very similar DNA, but there is a difference. Because everybody's experience is different, we also have a different human interaction process. Now, so let's, let's talk about finding common ground by exploring that human interaction process. And we're gonna start in that first phase in the census and getting people to say yes three times. Now, in exploring the human interaction process, like I mentioned, it's important to acknowledge that each person's hip is unique. And when we're exploring the uh, census, what the other person saw or heard, it's important to acknowledge that they may, even though we heard the exact same words or saw the exact same situation, we might think about it differently, feel about it differently, or even hear it differently. When I say the word home to somebody who was brought up in a loving, caring environment, they get warm feelings of, of, of comfort and support and peace and love. When I say the word home to someone who was brought up in an abusive environment, whether that was emotionally abusive, physically abusive, or sexually abusive, they're gonna get a whole different set of thoughts and feelings than that person who was brought up in a warm environment. Uh, so acknowledge that difference. Now, when I take a four or five word statement and I'm sitting around a group of 12 people and I whisper in the f person next to me uh, what that statement is and ask them to pass it on in a whisper so nobody else hears. By the time that statement comes around to me, it's way different because each person's human interaction process is different. And how one person hears and then interprets and then repeats what they just heard is much different than the next. And so things are gonna go off. So it's very important to find common ground to first start in that first part of the hip process and find out what the other person actually witnessed, what they saw and what they heard. And the way to do that is to explore it. So um, talking about a situation, this is what I saw and here's the words I heard. And here's how I think about that and, we share, and I share that. And then I ask, what, what, did, what, what did you hear? What words did you hear? And how did you interpret it? And I find that out. And as we're exploring that, okay, so then I can acknowledge, okay, so these are the words that you heard. And he'll say, yes. Yeah, you got, got it right. You're acknowledging me. Oh, okay, so I got my first yes. And so these are the words I heard and the way I interpreted it. Do you understand that? Whether you agree with it or not, do you understand that that's the difference? And I get a second yes. So I get two yeses just by exploring the person's, each other's human interaction process at the sense level. So find out what they exact heard, even though we heard the same words, they might've heard it differently. Find out what they saw, what they witnessed, even though you saw the same thing, they might've saw something different. It happens all the time. Explore the human, explore the sense part of the human interaction process first and start to find your common ground there and get the other person and yourself agreeing and get you both in that positive affirmation, yes, frame of mind. And as we build on those yeses, we get to a positive process and we're able to move forward easier. The second place that's easiest to find common ground is actually in the feelings. You know, even though, you know, and, and we go sense, think, feel, intend, and act, uh, the sense, think, feel, sometimes it's sense, feel, think. Having said that, there's billions of thoughts out there in the, in the multiverse. I, I can't put all the thoughts on one computer that's out there in the world that people access in different ways, whether it's through the cosmos and their own uh, thinking or by hearing other people or 
interpreting things, but there's billions of thoughts out there. And sometimes to find common ground in that thought part of the process is easier after we've found common ground in the other three parts, in the sensing, the feeling, and the intending. So typically I skip the thought and I just go to find common ground in the feelings. Now, like I mentioned, there's billions of thoughts out there, but all the feelings, the full spectrum of emotion that all people feel, I can put on two pages, sometimes three. And feelings are different than emotions. Emotions are triggered responses that usually spike feelings. Feelings or that usually spike, you know, spike us and, and trigger us, physically even. Feelings are controlled feelings. They're confidence, their persistence, patience, their, their love, their, 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 their controlled emotion that it goes along with reason and, and a reasonable thought and reasonable intention. Triggered emotions don't go with reasonable thought. They go with weird thoughts or, or, or uh, out there thoughts. And when we're communicating, it's important to tap into our reason and into our controlled feelings rather than our triggered emotions. Now, like I said, I can put all the feelings and emotions that people feel on a couple of pages. And people respond differently to different situations, different things that they hear, different things that they see. Having said that, what's important is I explore. So when you saw this or when you heard these words, how did you feel? What feeling was triggered? Oh, so, so you feel angry and frustrated. Well, when I heard those words, I didn't feel angry and frustrated. I actually got a little bit excited about the process of, and, and discovering that there's a weakness here and that we could fix it. So acknowledge, though, that, okay, so you felt angry and frustrated. Oh, well, I know what it's like to feel angry and frustrated. Once when I was doing this, I got so angry. I got so frustrated. And we relate to them on that emotional level. Because even though you might have a different feeling in this particular situation, even though you both witnessed the same things, whether it's hearing or seeing, um, and you experience a different feeling than they do when you witness that, you still can understand and relate to the feeling. And that's what I want you to do to find the common ground, is to find out what they felt or what emotion, high emotion was triggered when they witnessed what you what, they, what you both witnessed. And then explore that, acknowledge it and validate it. People have a basic human need to be validated, to be acknowledged, to be, uh, to, to, for, and, and for honesty. And whether I believe, I feel the same things in the same situation as the other person, doesn't matter. Whether I agree with it or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is they felt it, that it's real and true for them. And when I validate that and honor who they are as an individual, they feel more connected and it's easier to move that process on. So you felt frustrated and angry when you witnessed that. Am I correct? And they say, yes. Oh. Well, this is what I felt. Do you understand that even though uh, we had a different feeling, this, this is still true for me. Yeah, I, I get that. Okay, that's true for you. I get that pe different people will have different emotions triggered in different situations, even though I don't necessarily agree with that. And you get another yes. And so now we've got agreement and understanding and validation and acknowledgement and acceptance of each person's feeling. We've got commonality on the senses. We understand and, and understand each other's senses. We understand each other's feelings. So now we're, we're getting into that positive framework. We're getting into that common ground understandings. The next easiest place to find common ground is in the intention. Buddha said, God, uh, uh, the, the Buddha said that, that all people are basically good. Jesus believed exactly the same thing, as did Muhammad. They believed in the good, the basic good of all people. And I've done lots of mediation. And every time I've gone into a mediation situation, now most of these have been work-related, okay? So when I've gone into a mediation situation, and when I'm mediating, I do that. I explore each other's hips. I honor each other's, everybody's hips in the process. And then we find the common ground. And what I find is when I'm exploring the intention in work situations, the intentions are actually common. Both people want the company to do well or the organization to do well. Both people want to do well themselves at their job. They want to do a good job. They want to be rewarded for a good job. When we're exploring relationships uh, issues, if I've, if I've mediated any difficult relationship uh, conflicts, I find that both people want to be loved. 
Both people want to give love. When they feel that the love is cut off or they're not accepted, emotions get out of control and fights happen. But when we get to that basic human intention, people want good things. And when we're getting to the basics of exploring the human interaction process and we get past the emotional triggers of anger and frustration and the desire to make the other person feel those same things in us and we get underneath that was, I'm angry right now, I want you to feel angry too so you know how it feels like. And we get underneath that. Really what I want is the other person to hear me, accept me, and do what I want them to do. And that brings me to that next part of exploring intention. And when we're, what I want you to understand about that intention part of the process here is that it is in that part of the process that every human being becomes a salesperson. In fact, when we're intending something, we want to guide the other person to do something or agree with us or whatever, but we want to sell them on our idea. We want them to sell them on what we want the process to be. So we're always selling all day, every day long. When I'm going into a job interview and I'm sensing, thinking, feeling, intending, and acting, my intention is to get the job, to sell the company on hiring me. When I read a magazine and I sense that I'm, uh, my, my sight is kicking in and I'm reading words and I'm reading an ad to go to the mountains, um, I think, oh God, that looks nice. The mountains look nice. Oh, I'd like to. I have a desire to go there and experience that. Oh, so I'm, my intention becomes to share it with my wife to see if she wants to go. So I show the ad to my wife, so she senses that. I say, I want you to see this. When I saw that, I wanted to go to the mountains. I want to feel that peace. I want to feel that open air, that fresh air. I want to see the mountains. My intention for showing her that is to sell her on the idea of coming with me to the mountains. We're always selling in that intention part of the process. It's very important. Now, Brian Tracy, one of the top sales trainers in the world, um, says that when we want to truly sell something, the best thing we can do is shine the light on the prospect or the person we're trying to sell to, rather than shining the light on ourselves or on the product we're trying to sell. When we shine the light on the prospect, we sell way more stuff. The best salespeople are in, I know are not the best talkers, that's an old myth. The best talkers don't make the best salespeople. The best listeners and the best questioners and the best acknowledgers and validators, that's who makes the best salespeople. People want to feel acknowledged, validated, understood, and accepted. When we're exploring this intention part of the human interaction process, we're actually exploring the, a basic human needs group. And uh, we'll post a uh, list of basic human needs. There's a page of basic human needs at Success Tool Chest on the blog. Uh, when we're posting this video, it'll be up in the next seven days, seven to eight days. And um, on that intention list, you'll find, uh, I've got it right here, uh, the, the intentions, uh, intentions and basic needs list. People have a basic need for connection, for acceptance, for affection, for appreciation, for belonging and cooperation and companionship and community. We have a basic need for safety and security and stability and support for physical well-being. We have a need to get, breathe air, to eat food. We have a basic human need and intention for honesty and authenticity and integrity and presence, for joy, for humor. And as we're exploring intentions, we'll find that these needs will come up. We have a need for meaning and awareness and celebration of life, for challenge, for clarity, for competence. All of these basic human needs we can relate to and find common ground in. When we explore intentions, we can explore these basic human needs. And that's where we find our third common ground. And once we do that, then it's easier to find common ground in the thought processes. So we find common ground in the senses, in the feelings, in the intentions and basic human needs, and then we move it to the next level of agreeing on a thought process and agreeing on some compromise. Once we have the common ground and we're both in that affirmative state, it's easier to move to compromise and to the next level of finding a solution to move out of the struggle. So if you're in a difficult situation and things go off, come back to the human interaction process. Ask the other person what's going on for them. Explore their senses, their feelings, their intentions, and their thoughts. 
and you bring it back to the common ground. If you're in the middle of a conversation that goes sideways, just bring it back there. When you're planning your conversation and you know you're going into a difficult situation, know what your hip is. Know how you're thinking, feeling, intending, what your actions are going to be, which is to speak specific words. And have that intention to find out when you're going into that conversation what the other person's hip is. If you follow that guideline, you'll find common ground. You'll find resolutions to those difficult situations and those difficult problems. You'll be able to adjust when this conversation goes sideways. Just follow that hip, that human interaction process. I hope you enjoyed today's talk. You can download the hip for free. You can either watch the short video or download the uh, PDF at successtoolchest.com. It's the best awareness tool that you can use to guide conversations, whether they're difficult or easy ones. It's the best tool that you can use to develop your sales skills. It's free at successtoolchest.com. If you really want to become a great communicator and dive into the do's and don'ts of what words to use, what words not to use, what questions to ask, what questions not to ask, how to adjust your body tone, how to adjust your body language, if you want to learn all that information, sign up for the contact communications program at successtoolchest.com. It's only $200 and you will learn to be that great communicator. And the best communicators are the most successful people. When we can communicate, with anybody at work, whether that's a supplier or a customer or a coworker or a boss or a, 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 a person on our team that we're coaching. When we can communicate effectively, we can move things quicker. Take the contact communications program or take another program, but become a great communicator and your success will go to another level. Uh, it's only $200 at successtoolchest.com. Don't forget to like our videos, share them with your friends. Uh, check out findamentor.com. There's over 1,900 categories where you can be a mentor uh, in that area of life that you're an expert at or very good at and help somebody through their struggles. You can be a mentee in that area of life where you want to expand your knowledge and your growth. So it's all free at findamentor.com. Uh, I hope, again, that you enjoyed today's video. Please like our pages uh, here at Facebook. Uh, like our uh, websites. Make comments on any of our blogs. All of these Help Me Communicate video series is posted on our blogs. We're in week 25 now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed go today's, uh, today's talk on finding common ground. Go out and make it an awesome day. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.